Condition expressions allow us to specify constraints when manipulating data in DynamoDB table. If the condition expression evaluates to true, the operation succeeds. Otherwise, it fails. In this video, let's learn how to get started with condition expressions, some of the operators and functions you can use when writing condition expressions, and a few examples of condition expressions. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to another video in this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos around .NET, Azure, AWS, and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my .NET on AWS series. Without much delay, let's get started into learning more about condition expressions. To manipulate data in Amazon DynamoDB table, you can use the put, update, and delete item operations. All these operations allows us to use a condition expression as well. A condition expression is a string expression which can use specific operators and functions inside them. Now here you can see one of the sample condition expressions which is specifying the condition expression the product category should be in either of these two categories and the price should be between a specific amounts. Now if this condition expression evaluates to true then this specific DynamoDB operation is going to get succeed. If not, it's going to fail and throw an exception. Now with condition expressions, you can prevent overrides. So you can avoid overwriting an existing item with a new item with the same primary key. You can add an associated condition expression for that. You can also enforce business rules so that certain attributes and properties have the specific constraint applied on them. You can also use condition expressions to enforce business rules so that only valid data gets written into the DynamoDB table. You can also use it to prevent concurrent updates and also conditional deletes. We will see a few examples of how to use condition expressions from a .NET programming language. However, the code that I'm showing is specific to .NET. The concepts generally apply to other programming languages as well. Let's switch to Visual Studio and look at a few examples of using condition expressions. Here I have an existing solution open that I started using in my DynamoDB querying video. I have also used it for other videos which will be in the descriptions below. Now this is a simple ASP.NET web API application and this has the program.cs, the weather forecast data class and also the controller, the weather forecast controller. So let's navigate into the controller which has different methods based on the functionality that it is trying to explain. So you can go through the source code which will be linked in the descriptions below. Now let's come here and add a new method so that we can start exploring condition expressions. So let's scroll all the way down and add a method below the post method. So let's add a new HTTP post method inside here and let's add public async task and let's say post if latest. So we want to post this item only if it is the latest item. So let's take in the item, which is the weather forecast data. So let's take that as data and open the brackets for this method. Now inside this object, you can see this has a couple of properties. So let's add a new property, which is going to be last updated date time. So let's use the prop keyword and use the shortcut and create a new date time property and name this as last updated. Now this is going to be a date time property, which is going to be set when we send the data. So let's come back to our controller method and update this method to save this object only if the last date time is greater than what we have in the DynamoDB table. So if it's a new item, it's definitely going to get written because there are no other items with the same primary key. Now to use condition expressions, we have to use the low level API and not the high level DynamoDB context API. Now the previous post, I have been using the DynamoDB context and explicitly calling the save async. But in this case, we will have to use the Amazon DynamoDB client instance. Now I already have this in the constructor injected in. So I have an instance of I Amazon DynamoDB coming in, which I can use to put or update the item into the DynamoDB. So let's scroll down and use the DynamoDB client instance. Now, if you navigate back to program.cs, you can see that this is getting dependency injected into our collection. Now, if you're new to dependency injection in .NET, I highly recommend checking out my video before you proceeding further. So let's switch back and let's scroll all the way down and use DynamoDB client. So let's collapse this. 
let's use the underscore DynamoDB client dot put item async. So we will use this method to save this item into DynamoDB. Now this requires a put item request. So let's create a new put item request inside here. We need to explicitly specify the table name because no longer it's using the conventions that the DynamoDB context used. So in this case, the name of the table is the same as the object. So let's simply give name of weather forecast. Now we need to specify the item that we need to save. In this particular case, we need to transform the weather forecast into an item, which is a dictionary of string and attribute value pair. Now there is an easy way to get this item. So let's specify where item is equal to document, which is again a class from the DynamoDB SDK. And we can say from JSON and use the JSON serializer to serialize the data. So let's say JSON serializer dot serialize and specify the data that we are getting in. So all we are using is the document overload and converting from JSON data into this specific format, which is going to be a document object. Now, once we have the document item, we can use the extension method, which is to attribute map to convert it into a string and attribute value pair. Now let's specify the condition expression. So let's specify condition expression. Now in this particular case, we have the property last updated. So let's copy that and let's specify the last updated must be less than the specific value. So if the last updated in the DynamoDB table is less than what we are sending in, then we can perform the update. So let's pass in the value as last updated. Now you are already familiar when we use the colon, we'll have to specify the value as the expression attribute values list. So let's create a new value pair for this. So let's specify expression attribute values and create a new dictionary of string attribute value. Now this is how you can pass in data for this particular parameter that we have specified. So let's create a new value. So let's name this as last updated and let's specify the value for this. Now in this particular case, this is going to be data dot last updated. So let's make sure to close this method. Now this needs to be an attribute value. So let's use new attribute value. And since this is a date time, let's convert this into date time. So let's convert this to, to string and let's specify the format. So we can use the AWS SDK utils dot ISO 8601 date format. So let's specify that. And let's also close the one missing brackets. Now the put item async method needs to be awaited. So let's make sure to add an await call. Now we have the put item method successfully created. Now you can see the condition expression that we have specified here, which is the last updated in the DynamoDB server data should be less than the value that we are passing in. So this value should be greater than what we are already have in the database. So let's format this a bit so that we can easily read this. Now, since we already have an HTTP POST endpoint, we will need to explicitly name this. We can also use the PUT endpoint because we're using the PUT item method. But for now, let's just overload this with the HTTP POST and let's say POST if latest as the route. Now with the condition expression, now when we are writing the item for the first time, the last updated property would not exist. So in that case, the condition expression would turn to false. So in this case, we can also update this to check if the attribute exists in the first place. So we can use a function which we will learn about later. So let's say attribute not exists and specify the property name. In this case, this is going to be the last updated. So we can specify if the attribute not exist or if this condition evaluates to true. If you want, you can also use brackets to make this conditions explicit. So let's specify that. Now, since this is just a function and using the existing property, we don't need to pass additional attribute values. Now in the weather forecast table, so let's navigate to that. So let's go to the DynamoDB table, go to tables and navigate to weather forecast. We can see we have the partition key as the city name and the sort key is the date string. So let's make sure we have only one record for this date so that we can keep updating it as we need. So if we come back to our code, 
we can update the date time on this data. So let's specify date dot date is equal to just the date part so that we always get the same item when we are updating it. So let's specify data dot date and just the date part of this. So which means we will not have any time part even if we sent it through in the data. So once we have all of this set up, let's make sure to run and test this to see if this is working as expected. Now it launches the Swagger UI and if we scroll down, we can see the new method that we have just added. So let's expand this and let's click try it out. Let's specify the city name. So let's give this as Brisbane and let's leave the date as 2023-0501. Now you can see there is this time part, but this will get ignored by the new code that we've just added. We also pass in the last updated, which has the date time as well. Now let's click execute and this hits the breakpoint. Now this serializes this data and converts it into the document object of DynamoDB. Now from it, it converts that to an attribute map and passes it in the put item async method. So let's execute this method and let's continue the execution. Now, if you scroll down, you can see this response is 200 OK, which means it was successfully executed. So if we navigate back to the DynamoDB table, let's go to explore table items and let's sort this by the date. Now you can see the latest item that we have just added, which is for 2023, 05 and 01. You can see the time part is all zero. So if we navigate into this item, we can see that this is the object that we've just created. It also has the last updated daytime added. Now let's make another request to the same endpoint and let's update the data this time. So let's specify the temperature C as 10 and let's also make sure to increment the last updated daytime by a few seconds. So let's make this as 15 and let's click execute. Now in this particular case, this is going to use the new last updated as the parameter value. Now since the attribute already exists, it's going to check this particular condition which is the updated daytime in the DynamoDB server is less than what we are passing in. So let's continue the execution. And if we scroll down, this is also succeeded because we increased the daytime that we were passing in. So let's navigate back to DynamoDB and refresh this item. And you can see this temperature C is already updated to 10 and also the last updated. Now, if we make another request, so let's say we come back and specify this as 20, but we make the time as let's say 0 0.5 seconds, which is going to be less than what is there in the DynamoDB. So let's click execute and let's continue the execution. Now in this particular case, if you scroll down, you can see this throws an exception, which says the conditional request failed. Now this is because the condition expression has failed and DynamoDB throws an exception when trying to save this particular data. Now, the only way to make sure this operation succeeds is to make sure that this last updated daytime is greater than whatever we have in the database. So if I make this as 25 and let's say we make the temperature C as 20 and click execute and continue the execution, this is going to succeed. So if we come back to the DynamoDB and refresh this, this is going to be 20 temperature Celsius. DynamoDB has built-in operators and functions that you can use as part of the condition expressions. Now, some of the comparison and logical operators that you can use within the expressions are here in this particular page. So here you can use the comparators between, and, in, etc. You can also specify the not condition. Now, the operators that you can use are equals, not equals, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to. There are also some built-in functions that you can use. We already saw one, which was the attribute not exist. You can also use the attribute exist function. The attribute type begins with contains or size. Now the attribute type specifies the type of the particular attribute that you're trying to compare with. So if you want to make sure that the attribute type is a string, number or binary, etc., you can use the attribute type function. Similarly, you can read about the different functions and their uses in this documentation page. I'll make sure to leave a link in the descriptions below. Now in the previous endpoint that we've just added, we were just comparing the last updated value. Now, if you want to restrict adding of new items, if the key already exists in the DynamoDB, you can use that as well. So let's stop this and write a condition expression update for that particular method. So let's copy this. So let's copy this whole method and duplicate this 
in the line below. And let's make this as post if not exist. So let's add this as a method. And let's also rename this method name. So let's say post if not exist. Now, instead of the condition expression on the last updated, we can say the attribute not exist on the city name. And instead of or, we can specify and and specify the same condition again on the date property. Now, that is the combination of the primary key for this particular item. So let's specify post and attribute not exist and specify the property date. So only if the combination of these two properties does not exist, will this request succeed. Now we no longer need to send any attribute values, but in this particular case, since date is a reserved keyword, we need to pass it as a parameterized name. So let's use this as hash date instead of colon because this is as the name itself. And let's pass this as part of the expression attribute names parameter. So in this case, this is a new dictionary of dictionary. So let's simply name this as hash date and give the equivalent value for that. In this case, this is going to be date. This is just because date is a reserved keyword in DynamoDB. And whenever you are using it in condition expressions, you have to use parameterized way to send the date property. So here I'm using hash date and passing the value in here, which will be replaced in DynamoDB server. So once this is set up, let's run this and make sure this is working as expected. So let's run this application. So it launches the Swagger UI and we have the new method that we've just added. So let's make sure to specify a city name. Let's use Sydney in this case and let's click execute. Now this is going to send the data and since we don't have any data with that particular date time, it is going to write this inside the database. Now if I make a request again with the exact same data, let's click execute, this is going to throw an exception. This is because we already have a record which has the same city and the date. Now if I change the city name, so let's change this as Mumbai and let's click execute. Now since this combination is new, this does allow and pass through the application and saves to the DynamoDB. But if I make a request again, that's going to throw an exception as well. So this enforces that you can have only one combination of that item inside your DynamoDB table. Similar to the put method, we also have the DynamoDB update item method. You can use the condition expression in that as we have used in these examples. You can also use it in the delete statements if you want. So let's look at an example on how to use this from a delete. So let's add a new endpoint, which is HTTP delete. Let's name this as public async. Let's specify the task and let's say delete if greater than 20. So delete the item only if the temperature is greater than 20. So in this particular case, all we need is the string city name and also the string date time. So let's simply take that as a date. So let's just take those two attributes because 20 is going to be hard coded in this particular case. You can also make that as a parameter if you require. But this is just for demonstration purposes on how you can use condition expressions in delete statements. So let's specify the await and let's specify the DynamoDB client dot delete item async method and let's pass in the new delete item request. Let's pass the property. So similar to we'll need the table name, which is going to be the name of weather forecast. We'll need the keys. So let's specify the key and let's specify the dictionary of string attribute value pair. So in this case, we have the key values as city name. So let's specify city name, which is going to be the city name that we are passing in as a parameter. Now this needs to be a new attribute value. So let's create a new attribute value. Let's make sure to specify comma here and let's create a new instance of attribute value. Now, since this is string, we're just going to pass the string as is. Now we also need to pass the date, which is the range key. So let's pass the date property and let's specify the new attribute value as the value. Now, in this case, since I'm already sending it as a string, I can simply pass it as the string itself without converting it. Let's make sure to add the braces because these are items inside a dictionary. So we have two items getting added, which is the city name and the date, which is the two properties of this particular keys. We have an extra bracket here. So let me remove that and let's format. Now, once we have specified the key, 
let's now specify the condition expression on this particular operation. Now in this case, we want to specify that the temperature should be greater than 20. So in this case, let's specify the temperature C property should be greater than 20. So we cannot pass in 20 as a string here. So we'll have to pass it as a parameter. So let's specify this as a limit. And then we can specify the attribute values in this particular case and create a new dictionary attribute value and specify the limit as a parameter value. So let's specify limit and let's specify new attribute value. Since this is an integer, let's pass this as n and specify the value, which is going to be 20. So n stands for it is an integer type. Now, since the temperature C is of type integer, because that's how we have it added in the weather forecast. So you can see this is an integer. So let's add the appropriate type in this particular request as well. So let's make sure to close the delete item request method. We also missing one additional brackets. So let's make sure to add that in. Now we have the delete if greater than 20 method. So let's put a breakpoint here and let's run this application. So let's stop this. Let's build this again and let's run this application. Now this is going to launch the Swagger UI and we have the new delete method. So let's expand this and let's specify the city name. So let's specify the city name as Brisbane. Let's navigate back to our DynamoDB. Let's go to the tables and let's choose to delete this particular item. So let's copy this date time and let's paste this inside here and let's click execute. Now, in this case, this is going to evaluate this and run this expression in the DynamoDB server. And because the temperature is 20 in the server, this is saying condition request failed because the condition expression that we have says that it should be greater than. And the value that we have it is just 20 as well. So let's make sure this is 25 and let's save the changes on the DynamoDB item. And let's check to delete this item again. Now coming back to the Swagger UI, let's run this request again and let's continue the execution. Now, if you scroll down, you can see this operation is successful. Now that item is successfully deleted from the DynamoDB table. So if I refresh this, it says the item was not found. So we've successfully added a conditional expression to a delete statement as well. I hope this helps you to understand more about condition expressions in DynamoDB. We've seen how to use condition expressions from .NET and how to run different conditions on the DynamoDB server. Condition expressions can be used in a variety of use cases as we have seen. One of the common use cases is to make sure that the data consistency and also to avoid overwrites of data when there's multiple people working on the same object. Now, how you use the condition expressions is going to be dependent on your business case and your application scenarios. But I hope you understand the different functions and operators and how to use it from your .NET application. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.